Hey, it's Dr. Charles, aka Coach MD, with my weekly tw high noon Magical Monday broadcast trying to elevate uh, social media. And before I get started, I, I just want to bring to your attention that my uh, Coach MD page is going to be changing a little bit. I'm trying to bring uh, bring content. I'm trying to uh, look to see what it would be valuable for for you as, as uh, my followers of, of Coach MD, if you will. Uh, and if you'd like to continue getting uh, my broadcast and, and some of the content that I offer, go to my page, Coach MD. It's uh, facebook.com slash Coach MD. You actually have to go to the page and go to the follower section. There's a drop down menu and hit uh, see first. And that'll allow you to continue because Facebook is making changes. I think for the better, um, it'll give you what you really want to want to see. And so if you do want to see me, please go to that Coach MD drop down, see first, and we'll continue uh, being in touch at least every week. Anyway, what I'd like to talk to you today about getting your uh, Magical Monday off on the right foot, what I'd like to talk to you today is about anger. Oh, I've got to put on my angry face. And it's hard for me to do, but I recall when um, my children were much younger and there was a disagreement. I have four children. Uh, they're a little older now, but when they were younger, I remember there was something going on and, and they were arguing, whatever. And um, I must have had a very upset or angry look on my face. And one of my children said, you know, Dad, you really scared me. You were scary. And I, I didn't even realize what I was, what I might have looked like and but if you ever want to know what you look like when you're angry, just go to the mirror and, and you'll see. And it's not a pretty sight. And so what I kind of want to do today is tease out anger. You know, what, what does that really mean? It's kind of human to be angry. We do get angry, right? Um, I remember when I was uh, interviewing for medical school and I, I was lucky enough to get a behavioral scientist or psychiatrist in the medical school to interview me. Oh my goodness! If I if you ever want to want the, if you ever want to figure what who the least person is to interview you, that would have to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Anyway, I, I must have been um, <clears throat> at the time twenty years old or so, and I remember he asked me, "Do you ever get angry?" And you know. I, I, yeah, obviously everybody gets angry, but you know, I, I didn't really, it kind of took me off guard and I, I didn't, I wasn't really an angry uh, guy or angry teenager or whatever. And I think I might've said no, which was, you know, probably not really truthful. And I said, well, maybe I do get angry sometimes. He says, well, what do you do when you get angry? And I couldn't really figure it out. And, but you know, anger, what I've, I, I've figured out as I've gotten older and I've looked into myself and what makes me angry, because obviously I get angry. And what I've looked at friends and, and, uh, and, and the work that I've done is anger really is the fight of the fight or flight response. So anytime you, we get angry, it, it always, 100% of the time. Now we've been told you can't say things are 100%. I guarantee you though, 100% of the time, in order to be angry, something has to trigger us to be angry. What would that trigger be? Well, a lot of times it's, it's being dissed or disrespected, right? Or not appreciated. Or uh, Those are the, the, the kind of the surface ones. There are a lot that, that go down deeper, though. There are things uh, that we get angry about the for the world, that we're angry at the world. Well, I have news for you. If you feel like you're angry at the world, that anger has the only thing in common that that has is you. Okay, you. Everybody can't be wrong. The whole world can't be wrong. The only uh, the only piece of that equation which is remaining constant is you. So if you feel as though you're carrying this burden on that you're angry with the world, you have to start looking inside and teasing it out a bit. And that's what I'm going to help you do today in this uh, Facebook Live because there is nothing that holds back growth, progress, and success than holding on to anger. Nothing holds back your growth, progress, and success than, hold, than holding on to anger. So as you know, this Magical Monday broadcast for January is all about change. And the reason why I choose Monday to do this is because it is the first day of the week. And I want, I want everyone, including myself, to get the week off on a good, good foot. So, and take the right steps. 
So as I mentioned, anger is the fight of the fight or fight response. And uh, I, I recall a, a story that I, I heard uh, some time ago with a, a woman who was at a, a conference, a, a kind of a motivational uh, conference. And after the motivational speaker finished, um, he was taking a few questions and she went right up to him. She wanted to be next, but she, there were a lot of other people asking questions. Finally, it got to her. The, the, he, he turned to her and said, you know, what do you, what do you have to ask me? And she started a barrage of questions, one after the other. I mean, really intense. And, and he said, excuse me, you know, could you please stop? Um, I don't think I could answer your questions. And of course, she looked really embarrassed and flustered and, and yes, angry. And he said, let me ask you one question. When you were walking up to, to talk with me today, what was on your mind? And she said, well, I, I was you know, really kind of nervous, but I was thinking that, you know, you're going to think my questions are stupid. You're, you're not going to think I'm intelligent. You're going to think that um, I'm foolish. And she, and he asked, well, how did that make you feel towards me? And she said, angry. It made me feel angry towards you. So he talked to her. And, and as you can see, she already had the outcome predicted. She had predicted it because of her own fake news story in her head that told her that this guy was not going to like her, was going to think she's an idiot, was going to basically disrespect her. And what do we do as humans? We, when we fight or flee, it means there's danger, threat, or vulnerability lurking out there. And right there, that interaction, that was a danger, a threat, or vulnerability. Why? Because she, was, she expected him to one-up her, to disrespect her. And so it's a trigger, and that's the fight. And the fight comes out as anger. So whenever you have that anger, know that it is a fight or flight. It's important to kind of start thinking about where is it coming from. Most of the time, our anger, we're fighting something about which we have no idea. We don't really know. So when your um, uh, significant other leaves the cap off of the, the toothpaste or doesn't pick up his socks or his underwear off the floor and you're seething with anger. Well, guess what? It's not those socks on the floor, that underwear or that, that cap off of the toothpaste. It's about something greater, a greater threat, an overall probably feeling of being disrespected overall in the relationship. And uh, February is going to be my broadcast on relationships. Uh, just a little plug with that. I am kind of an expert. No, I didn't go to school, but yeah, I've been married for 28 years. I have four children. I have a, a, a pra medical practice, so I deal with a lot of people. So the relationships come from, uh, ideas come more from my personal experience and observations. But that'll be for, for next, starting next week. But getting back to the anger part, it always means that we're, uh, but we're being triggered. When you're on the uh, driving down the road, you know, feeling all good, and all of a sudden someone cuts in front of you, and you feel that rage. That you know, what did that person do? Well, that rage is not coming from that person. That rage is coming from something in your life that you're unhappy with, something that you are feeling vulnerable about, something that you feel threatened. And it, a lot of times, it could be finances, it could be the health, it could be relationships. It's usually one of those three that cause that anger. The anger has to come from somewhere. Well, when we're carrying that anger, it makes us act and behave in certain ways. And you know, since I, I look at um, what what stands in stands in our way that blocks us, um, is that you know that fight or flight, that automatic uh, instinct that we have. And that automatic brain that I call it always reacts to danger, threat, or vulnerability, and it causes us to behave in certain ways, as I mentioned. Well, we, you know, we, you know, people ask me all the time. Well, you know, how do you, you know, how do I be, uh, how do I get my way, or, or, or how do I stand up for what I believe in? Well, the behavior that's associated with the automatic brain, the fight is aggression. So the fight is aggression. And that's, that's manifest in anger or rage. And the flight is being passive, is just letting it happen. The action of our mind, what I say our divine nature, is being assertive. Big difference. And I'm going to give you some examples in a second. So being aggressive or being passive 
is the behavior of our automatic brain. It is the fight and the flight. And some people will, uh, will come up and ask me, well, what about being passive aggressive? Well, to me, there's nothing passive about being passive aggressive. Passive aggressive is always giving like a little, kind of like a little dagger in you, you know, kind of a little, you know. So the, the, the passive aggressive would be something like, oh, you know, and, and this comes from a place of anger, okay? Or jealousy, which is anger, really, is a manifestation, it shows itself in anger. So let's say somebody who you care about has is is more secure financially than you and they they travel and they and they just they wanted to share with you that they're going away and you know whether or not they should share that or not that's a a topic for another discussion but you might say oh you go ahead you have fun oh i hope you have a great time uh, you know we'll just sit home we haven't been able to take a vacation in 10 years but you know you go and have have fun so that nudge, that little guilty little dagger in you, the passive aggressive uh, action is actually very gr- aggressive. It's actually very rageful and angry, even though you say it with a smile on your face. Or let's say you have an argument with your, your spouse and for whatever reason, and uh, your, your spouse goes out and, and you're, you, you, both of you are watching uh, some, you're binging, let's say, on, on, a, on a series and you're, you, you're, uh, you were, had an agreement that you would wait to, fi- to watch the final episode together. But she comes home and you're sitting on the couch and she asks you what you were doing and says, oh, well, you know, I didn't know what time you were going to come home, so I went ahead and watched it. Okay, well... That's a little thing maybe, but guess what? That's an anger, that's anger, that's anger manifesting itself. So honestly, when we're, when we're holding on to this anger and being aggressive or passive, and of course aggressive is, is striking out, is hitting or banging things or throwing things. So what would be the difference between being assertive? Well, being assertive and going back to my interview with that behavioral uh, uh, behavioral scientist or psychiatrist are interviewing me, if I was more mature at the time and if I was more insightful, I might have said, well, yes, of course I get angry. Everyone gets angry. But I don't act on that anger because that's what causes us a block in our growth, our progress, and ultimate success is when we act on that anger. And when we act on it, nothing good ever happens. And we hate ourselves or or don't like ourselves after that happens. So uh, being assertive is different. Being assertive is being able to recognize that you've been triggered and taking a time out. So I I used to have this thing with, with my children that when I used to feel that that anger and what could cause anger? What about kids? Well, if you have a two-year-old who's rolling on the floor with a temper tantrum, right? Some, it, it, it ignites something in us, like an anger, like a, like a rage. And where that comes from is that thing uh, who's behaving that way on the floor is triggering, a, a, is disrespecting, is kind of one-upping us. When we're being one-upped, it's an automatic human instinct to feel as though we have to, that we're in danger. We have to fight or flight. So I used to have something. I said, Daddy's going to take a time out right now. I used to leave the room. I used to take some cleansing breaths. I used to you know, say to myself, there's no danger here. I'm in control. And I used to come back. And I used to say something that something, the tantrums don't work around here. This is not how we get things. And there is a consequence to those actions. And you could say, when you behave this way, this is what happened. So if you behave this way, then this is going to happen. So you have a way to gain control, to, to reel yourself in. And understanding that, again, anger is the fight response. When you have that anger, that rage, it always means that there's some danger, threat, or vulnerability that's triggering you. It always means that, well, it usually means that it's one of the big three that's either financial, relationship, or health-related. And understand, yes, things are, are challenging, maybe even bad, that are happening and that cause us to be triggered. But when we act on that anger, whether it's in, either directly through action, hurtful action, throwing things, or yelling, or screaming, or cursing, 
or whether it's passive aggressive, same thing, it's still aggressive. When we act in that way, nothing ever happens that's good. It's being assertive. It's being able to recognize what's happening inside, taking a step back and then addressing it, what's happening at the moment. Not what happened 10 years ago, not what happened 15 years ago, not saying, oh, you're always like this. Oh, you're, you're like this. This always happens. No, it's addressing the, act, the, the circumstance at hand right at that moment. And a lot of people have very, a lot of challenges with anger. And there's one very, uh, very easy way to neutralize that anger. And that is through gratitude. So a lot of times we get angry because of all the things that have happened to us, all the things that we don't have that we wished we had. Well, when you start recognizing the things that you do have, and when you get angry at your spouse for the little things, and, and those things do build up over time, and those are things that destroy relationships. When you are appreciative and show that appreciation, display the appreciation, the gratitude, and actually practice an attitude of gratitude. We've all heard that line. But every day when you wake up or go to sleep at night, focus on the things that you have Use that as your foundation to move forward because that does open up the doors. That opens up the doors to your divine nature to make things happen. It will bring you down a path of, of growth, of progress, and true success where you can enjoy the happiness and, and see happiness rather than anger. When anger is the foundation of your steps, then it, it will sabotage all your efforts. But when you focus on gratitude, it will neutralize the anger. But it's important to understand as I laid out about the aggressive response, the passive response, and the assertive response. The aggression is that anger and rage. And nothing ever good happens when we act in alignment or in, uh, in accord with that anger and rage. But when we are assertive, we recognize that everyone gets angry. We're able to take a step back and then appreciate what we have, but also understand with communication and addressing what's happening right now, it will make, it will, it will create a peace. It will create a foundation of moving forward. And I hope that you implement that as well as gratitude on this magical Monday so it, it will bring in those little miracles that are going to happen every day for you. And I know they will because you are going to walk in a path of mindfulness in your divine nature, which is in all of us, which we all have when we work in alignment with our gifts and talents and God given skills. These are things that are going to help us succeed and help you succeed. And I know as you move forward this week, it will happen for you. So until my next broadcast, which will be the first Monday in February next week, 12 noon, every Monday, this is Dr. Charles, and, a.k.a. Coach MD, wishing you a beautiful, magical week ahead. And our topics for February are going to be all about relationships. So I hope you can tune in every, uh, every Monday at noon. Leave me comments. Uh, a shout out to Lynn, who's uh, in British Columbia, who's helping me moderate uh, this Facebook Live. Thank you, Lynn, for your support and help. And uh, I will read all your comments. I promise you that. And I appreciate you taking the time to uh, hear my thoughts. And hopefully they can help guide you and help you help yourself for success and happiness and ultimately life satisfaction and peace. So until next time. I'm Dr. Charles, Coach MD. Bye for now.